Hi, this is Dan Thomas from Dagware.com. This is a tutorial for Final Cut Pro X, or Final Cut Pro 10, depending on which you prefer, about how to change default properties for generators, titles, effects, and transitions. After this tutorial, you should be able to do things like, but not limited to, change the default font or outline color for a title, so the next time you drop the title onto your timeline, you will already have the font and outline color you prefer. This tutorial is also an introduction to Apple Motion 5. Yes, in order to do the things this tutorial teaches, you will need to purchase Apple Motion 5 from the App Store for a measly 50 bucks. In my opinion, this is money well spent. Watch this tutorial and see if you don't end up agreeing. The software packages used in this tutorial are Final Cut Pro X 10.1.1 and Apple Motion 5.1. The topics we will cover are changing default properties for generators, Caveats for changing properties for generators, titles, effects, or transitions that are in use. Changing default properties for titles. Armed with this information, you will be ready to try changing default properties for any Final Cut generator, title, effect, or transition. So let's get started. One of the things you could do incredibly easily with Motion is change the default property values of Final Cut generators, titles, effects, and transitions. We're going to start with a slightly contrived example. You may never want to do this specific thing, but it illustrates the point. And it's a nice simple example to introduce a process of changing default property values. We'll do something a little more useful as soon as we're done with this example. Let's say for the purposes of this example that we regularly use a custom generator and set its color to red, like this. Let's change the custom generator so it defaults to red. Let's also change it so the color dropdown is already open in case we want other colors. That's one less thing we have to click. Right click on the custom generator and select Open a Copy in Motion. Believe it or not, that did exactly what it said it would do. It opened a copy of the custom generator in Motion. Notice that this file is titled Custom Copy. We don't actually change the built in generator, we change a copy of it. We can name it something different, but for now let's leave it as Custom Copy. I'm not going to bother explaining anything about the motion interface except what we need for these examples. Motion can do a lot of things, so it can appear daunting. But the nice thing about motion is you can ignore all the complicated stuff. You can start out very simply and gradually learn whatever you want at your pace. Even if you never learn anything other than what I show you in this tutorial, it's worth the $50 from the Apple Store. I'm going to go through this very quickly. By default, motion should have opened up with most of what we need already selected. You can watch this section multiple times if I go too fast for you. We want to change a project property, so make sure the project is selected. Make sure the inspector pane is visible. If it isn't, click this icon. Pick the inspector tab. Make sure the project tab is selected and the publishing sub tab is selected. In this pane are all the properties as they appear in Final Cut. Let me show you what I mean. Here's Final Cut, and here's the generator's properties. Notice that this says Published Parameters. Here's Motion. Notice that this says Published Parameters. Final Cut. Motion. The way the Published Parameters appear in Motion is how they will appear in Final Cut. The same holds true for titles, transitions, etc. So let's change the published parameters in motion so they will appear in Final Cut exactly as we want them to. For our generator, it shows the color property set to black and the controls collapsed. Let's expand the color property and set the color to red. Save the file, then switch back to Final Cut. Let's delete the original custom generator from our project. Now in the browser, notice how our custom copy is already present in Final Cut? We didn't have to restart Final Cut to see it, it happened automatically. Let's add our new generator to our timeline. Notice how the color is now red and the dropdown is expanded. That's it, that's all it takes. I want to show you one other thing using the generator before we move on. What happens if we're already using our custom generator and we change the default color again? Well, that depends. The bottom line is that you need to be careful with your generators or titles or whatever if they're being used in projects. 
If you change something in them, you may get unexpected results. Let's try it out and see. Let's put three of our generators in this project. We'll name the first one default, so we know we didn't change anything in it. For the second generator, let's change only the blue portion of the color so we get purple, and name it accordingly. For the third generator, let's change all the color parts and name it accordingly also. Now let's change our generator in motion so it's yellow instead of red. Save it and switch back to Final Cut. It looks like nothing's changed, but actually a lot of things changed. If we drop another generator onto the timeline, we can see that it is indeed yellow. So let's restart Final Cut to make sure everything gets updated properly. Wow, quite a change, huh? The generator we didn't change at all is now yellow, just like our custom generator. The generator in which we changed the blue part of the color is now white. And the generator in which we changed all the colors stays as it was when we changed it. If you're technically minded, you can probably figure out why each generator was affected differently. But the bottom line is, be careful when changing your generators or titles or whatever if they're in any projects. The results can be confusing, and that's assuming you notice any changes. It's quite possible you won't notice the changes until after you've rendered your final version, and that always sucks. Let's move on to an example that will probably be of more use to you. Let's modify a title's text default properties. We'll start by adding a basic title to our project. Notice that for this title, there's nothing in the Published Parameters pane. If there was something here, we could change it just like we did with the generator. But for this title, we're going to be working with the text pane. So let's change the font size so it's easier to see on this screen. Now let's turn Outline on. Ugh, red. Who thought that would be a good outline color? Also, the sliders for red, green, and blue don't show here. So let's change that. Open a copy of the basic title in motion, just like we did with the generator. This may open up with this group collapsed, like this. If it does, just open it up like this. We want to change the text item, and that's the item with this icon next to it. Just to warn you, some of the titles can be quite complicated, and figuring out what to change can take a little trial and error. No big deal, just be patient. For the basic title, this is the item we want to change. Again, pick the Inspector tab. We want the Text tab and the Style sub-tab. A little exploring will show you where everything is. Make Outline active. You can't change anything in it unless it's active. Once you're done changing things, you could turn it off before saving it if you wanted to, but we're going to leave it active. Expand Color and change it to Black. Save it and switch back to Final Cut. We're going to delete the title we had in the timeline and then add our new basic title copy to the timeline. Again, we'll increase the font size so we can see it better. There it is, the outline is turned on just as we left it in motion. The color is black and the color sliders are visible just as expected. Let's change the default font and size just for fun. We have to delete the title from our timeline and re-add it to see these changes. And there it is. The new font and font size worked great.